Hi everyone, my name is Riley Siebel and I'm the Director of Developer Experience at C3.ai. I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about our company and the problem that we were hoping to solve together with Pronovix. So the C3.ai solution is a platform as a service, it's a data integration platform, it's a rapid AI and application development platform, and a massively scalable distributed processing platform. This is a software suite for digital enterprise transformation. So what do we mean by that? Well, right now in the world of technology, there are some really interesting things happening. The first is the growth of elastic cloud computing. We basically have infinite free computation and storage capacity, uh, which enables this new uh, trend of big data. And by big data, I don't mean a lot of data. I mean all the data. Another interesting fact is the Internet of Things, which is creating tons of data from objects, devices, and people spread around the world uh, in a sort of streaming real-time way. And these things together really enable AI and machine learning. You have enough computation to train and run your models. You have enough data for them to actually do something useful. And when these four things come together, they really create what we call digital transformation. So let me give you some examples of what I mean by that. These are some of the applications that C3 has developed. Inventory optimization applications, demand forecasting, predictive maintenance, anti-money laundering, precision health, route optimization for vehicles, production scheduling for manufacturing. And we apply these applications in many industries from banking, aerospace, government, defense, manufacturing, smart cities, healthcare, oil and gas. Some of our customers are very well known, people like Royal Dutch Shell, US Air Force, Caterpillar, Raytheon, Baker Hughes, 3M, Bank of America. And so when I say an AI suite for digital transformation, what I mean is a platform on top of which you can build big data, AI, IoT applications to transform your business. And so our architecture is this, basically we have a bunch of data integration services, data persistence services, connectors to different databases and systems, multiple analytics and processing capacities from stream processing, MapReduce, batch and queue processing, as well as platform management services like logging, auditing, security, APIs, time series, multi-tenancy, monitoring and authentication and a bunch of application development tools and user interface tools like Jupyter, Eclipse, Domo, MicroStrategy, React, JavaScript, and Angular. Um, people think we're pretty good at this. We are number one in analytics and data, number one in platform, number one in security, number one in connect functions, and number one in partner strategy for industrial IoT software platforms. Um, also number one in strength of market offering. And if you're looking for an enterprise ML development platform, we're kind of it, okay? So just to give you an example of some of the applications that we've built on top of this platform, they include predictive maintenance, reliability, sensor health, cash management, smart lending, production optimization, yield optimization, uh, energy management, anti-money laundering, all kinds of apps. To give you an example of what they look like, this is C3 Reliability. This is an application to help you keep a machine the size of a building kind of running, right? So this thing is made up of lots and lots of subparts, all of which are connected. You want to apply machine learning to detect anomalies, um, predict failures in subsystems of your you know, oil rig or whatever it is, so that you can prevent the thing from exploding. Uh, another application looks like this. This is inventory optimization. This is an application for global manufacturing companies to keep track of inventory and then apply machine learning to optimize how much stock you're holding at your various uh, facilities so that you can uh, save money or spend that money on something better. So in order to build this platform and this series of applications, we have developed a new technology stack over about the last 10 years, okay? So let's kind of look at the world of AI, machine learning, and big data systems. There are a lot of them. And if you go look at their website, they kind of all look like a AI big data platform. But are they? Well, let's talk about Cassandra. 
Cassandra is a distributed key value database. It's a really, really good one. If you go to their website, it'll say we are an AI and ML platform, but it's not a full solution. It's a distributed key value store. What about TensorFlow? Uh, again, TensorFlow is marketed as an AI platform, but it's a math library. It does really good matrix multiplications and matrix operations very quickly. And if what you need is a matrix library for doing um, machine learning, it's a really good one, but it's not a full solution. What about Databricks? Well, Databricks is an amazing technology for data virtualization, and it's really useful, but not sufficient. What about SageMaker? Well, SageMaker is a hosted Jupyter solution. It's very useful, but it's not a full solution. And the world of these things is just overwhelming. So if you're gonna try to go build an application or a platform using these um, systems, you're gonna to have to pick your favorite one in each of these different areas and make them all work together, right? So you're gonna pick your favorite relational database, non-relational database, stream processing framework, data connector, security architecture, uh, UI and virtualization tools, and it's doable, okay, but there's a lot of work to be done. And as your system grows in complexity, the number of of technologies that you have to integrate with other technologies grows and grows and grows until this looks like an end to the end problem. And there are probably some of you out there that are smart enough to do this, but I know that I'm not. And this is an extreme challenge. And this is kind of where the world is when you're talking about building a big data AI and ML platform today. So we didn't do that. Instead, we built a type system that abstracts all of these underlying systems and allows data engineers, application developers, data scientists, end users, and IoT systems to communicate with all of these different systems as if they were one system through a unified type system. And that means that we've abstracted the infrastructure. So C3.ai will run on Azure, it will run on AWS, it will run on GCP, it will run on IBM, it will run on NVIDIA hardware. Uh, you can deploy a single C3 application running across all of these clouds using all of their services, or you can pick your favorite services from different clouds and um, use those. So isn't this conference about documentation, okay? What are we talking about here? Well, to understand this, you kind of need to know what it looks like to be a developer on C3. So I mentioned a type system, here's a type, okay? If you're familiar with object-oriented programming languages like Java or TypeScript or sometimes Python, this might look a little familiar. What I'm doing here is I'm defining a type called SmartBulb. It's a, it extends LightBulb, so it's a specific type of LightBulb, right? It has a latitude that's a double. It has an apartment, which is a reference to another type called an apartment. It has bulb measurements, which is a series of data about this SmartBulb. It has a prediction, uh, which is the result of a machine learning algorithm, along with a rule for how to calculate that prediction. And it has a function that will return you the lifespan in years, which happens to be implemented in JavaScript. Now, as a developer on C3, I write these things, lots and lots of them, many hundreds or sometimes thousands. I send them to the C3 server, and the C3 server turns them into an application. So in this particular case, it will create, for example, some database tables, um, one to store a smart bulb, uh, one to store its bulb measurements. It will create some API gateways to serve this lifespan and years function. And it will register this calculation that it needs to keep this prediction up to date based on that calc field, right? So this is me telling the platform, here's my application, or at least a little part of it, make it so. And if I'm running on AWS, this will go into Postgres. If I'm running on Azure, this might go into Azure Data Lake. If I'm running on Google Cloud, you know, it'll go into Google Cloud's uh, SQL database equivalent. And the thing that's really nice about this is that it's self-documenting, right? This is the documentation of this object. If I'm a developer, I really just need this to know how to use it. Um, the comments are really nice, but the references to the type system make it really self-documenting. Okay, so as a developer, I write hundreds or maybe thousands of these things. And I'm doing all of that in a package, okay, my application. And my application depends on other packages 
developed either by C3 or by other companies in the C3 ecosystem. Um, and each of those packages has their own types uh, and each of which is their own docs. So when I have an application, its documentation is the union of the documentation from all of the dependencies. Um, we, so of course, support inheritance, right? So you can have a type called fixed asset and then a type facility, which extends fixed asset and adds some fields. This is very standard, nothing magic here. But one thing that is really magic is that we have this capability called remix. So for example, if a package defines a type such as risk score history and gives it a parent, which is an asset, some other package can say, I'll take risk score history, thank you, but parent is not an asset, it's a smart bulb. So the question is, how do you render documentation for this type when any customer can change it? All right. In addition to types, people can also write docs in their packages. So these uh, docs are referenced inside packages that, um, sorry, they're contained inside packages that developers create. And this is a combination of our favorite markdown flavors. So GitHub, Daring Fireball, um, and one other one that I can't remember right now, along with some specific C3 flavor. So you can see here around line 84, I say at link promise. Well, what I mean there is render a link here, and when someone clicks on it, show them the API documentation for the type promise, right? So we've added to our markdown, C3 flavored markdown, the capability to actually link into the API reference docs directly, and all of this is stored in the code. All right. So how are we going to give people access to this documentation? Well, the platform should render the docs, right? The platform has all the types. The platform has all the docs. Let's let the platform render the docs. So fine. Here you can see me rendering the documentation for SmartBulb. Um, it looks fine, I guess. You can see latitude, longitude, the unit of measure. Um, and I can write a little piece of JavaScript you can see over here on the right which will instruct this browser page, which is being rendered by the platform, to give me the documentation. OK, problem solved, right? Well, not really. So this is the state of the world in C3 in 2019. I need to deploy an application in order to read its docs. I can only view docs for the version of that application that I've deployed. So if the release notes are code and they're contained in the application, then I can't read the release notes until after I upgrade? That doesn't feel right. Um, and what if I just want to read the docs to decide if I want to pay for this platform? Well, I can't do that because I need the platform to read the docs. And also the interface is very technical. You need to have some JavaScript knowledge, you need to instruct the platform to return the docs to you. So you need to already be trained on how to get to the docs. But to do that, you need to get the docs. So we're kind of in this catch 22 where I need the platform to read the docs, but I can't really figure out how to get the docs until I've read the docs, but it doesn't, right? So you see where I'm going here. So what does a solution to these problems look like? Well, we want to provide convenient access to documentation sourced from the code. We want to allow users to evaluate the product by reading the documentation without having to pay us first. We want to build an appropriate experience for a developer site or a company like C3 with serious corporate customers like Bank of America, the United States Air Force, Shell, and 3M. And we want to integrate and augment this experience with other developer experiences like our training portal and our community portal. Oh, and we'd like to present the whole thing at C3 Transform, our annual developer conference that's going to happen on February 25th, 2020. I think less than four or five months after we start the project. So this is the problem statement, and I'm very excited to allow Mark to show you what we did and how we work together to deliver an excellent experience. 
Thank you, Riley. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mark Winberry. I am the Senior Director of U.S. Operations at Pronovix. And if you want to reach out to me, here is my uh, contact information. For the C3 project, we started with the Pronovix Developer Portal uh, product as our base, uh, which has a lot of functionality already built into it. It's built in Drupal 8. And then we uh, started doing the customizations that were necessary for C3. Um, for C3, they had a set of conceptual docs that we built, built Drupal content types for. These were uh, topics and guides and how-tos. Uh, the guides and how-tos uh, were either standalone or composite uh, docs that uh, were created by combining topics. Uh, the topics had links uh, to C3 type files, to uh, guides, and uh, so there was a lot of cross-linking inside the documents that we had to manage. And uh, most importantly, um, we had to import and manage um, thousands and thousands of uh, C3 type reference docs. Um, then we needed to integrate for single sign-on with C3's Okta system. And we integrated with the community form that they already had up and running uh, in, in Discourse. Um, we implemented Solar Search for the site and also in Discourse, and then aggregated the results back in uh, the site so that you could be on the site and find uh, the content you were looking for, whether it be uh, local on the site or out in Discourse and would lead users to the appropriate location. Um, we also created a PDF generator so that uh, you could download uh, any of the um, file or you could download a file for any of the uh, documentation that you wanted to take offline. And one of the neat things that I think we did was uh, we had a problem with uh, these uh, C3 type uh, files that uh, if expanded, um, they would be extremely long and unwieldy uh, to look at in the browser. And so uh, we had lots of uh, collapsible in-page navigation, uh, but we still wanted to offer search through the document. So uh, we implemented a custom uh, JavaScript search tool that allowed in-page search uh, that looked even in the parts of the pages that weren't rendered. Uh, which was really neat. And last but not least, the most important part of the project uh, was this custom exporter and importer, which is uh, the DOCSIS code uh, CICD uh, process that I'm going to talk more about now. So uh, the DOCSIS code uh, exporter importer uh, was written in Go. It runs in a Docker container, and we uh, provide that, doc, uh, that Docker image um, to C3 in Docker Hub. It is run in C3's uh, CI CD build and test pipeline, uh, or it can be run um, if they give us an endpoint to hit. Um, but it can be run either by Pronovix or by um, C3.ai personnel. And in the build and build and test uh, CI CD environment, um, they essentially create uh, these C3 servers. And while the server, the stranding net server is created, um, we can make API calls to that server and their code repo or any other uh, parts of their system that we need to. Um, we retrieve a JSON object and we store the data in a temporary non-persistent database. And uh, we export all of those thousands and thousands of documents and, and uh, type file references and then uh, process that to reconstruct uh, all of the links and uh, to build the composite guides and how-tos from uh, these multiple C3 uh, markdown files that, um, th that are referenced. We use a manifest file that, that specifies uh, how to build these composite guides. It, make, it, it references, and that uh, manifest file is maintained by the documentation team whenever they build uh, a guide or a how-to. Uh, and then we implemented versioning support so that we don't uh, um, duplicate content in the server because there would just be so much content and you wouldn't want to search for something and then have uh, uh, three versions of it returned that are essentially the same thing. So we only present um, different versions um, 
whenever the, the content is actually different. Uh, then we insert all of this content into the developer portal. And it's a really great piece of uh, technology and uh, the team worked very hard on it. Um, in talking about the project, I just wanted to point out some of the things that were key to our success that if you're doing a project like this, you definitely want to do. Um, we started with an on-site on workshop that we walked through information architecture and did uh, a technical discovery. And uh, that was really key to us because, uh, as you might imagine from Riley's presentation, you can see that it was a very complex uh, system that we were trying to uh, understand and to uh, generate the doc documentation for. Um, another key to the uh, success is that Riley gave us very clear priorities. And not only did we have very clear priorities uh, for the project, he gave us guiding principles and gave us uh, his future vision. So as we were going through all of those little decisions that have to be made by developers uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, we were able to make those decisions uh, because he gave us these guiding principles and vision and we understood his priorities. Um, we worked in, a, in an iterative fashion. Uh, we gave um, lots of uh, design presentations and demos and uh, prototypes and mock-ups. And um, sometimes uh, we met uh, three times a week, which was uh, not easy because we were uh, spanning uh, from uh, Central Europe to California. And so it was a, a late call for people in, in Europe and was early for the C3.AI team, but they were super in working with us and uh, it really worked out very well. Um, offline, we, we had uh, the ability uh, to use uh, the shared communication tools that we provided. Uh, uh, C3 was able to comment on designs and see designs that were changed uh, in Figma. Um, we had Slack channels established where we were communicating and could leave messages for each other. And we had uh, shared document repositories like uh, Google Docs. So uh, not only did we have a lot of face-to-face uh, -face and uh, calls, we had um, these uh, collaboration tools that we're all using these days with uh, you know, our work from home process. I also wanna mention that uh, we recorded our calls and demos which was really helpful because um, especially when you're, when you're spending time zones, um, we would run back uh, the video from you know, one of our calls to uh, make sure that we understood precisely what someone had said uh, and what decision was made. And um, we also had a very clear approval process. There were, um, we, we established a spreadsheet that had all of the elements that were designed and implemented and uh, clear sign off from the C3 team or uh, notes either in Figma or in the spreadsheet telling us what uh, what they didn't like and when it changed. And that worked, all of that worked really well. And I would say uh, was a, a good project pattern. Um, in terms of learnings, things that, uh, that could have gone better, um, there, we, we recognize that you just can't over communicate. Um, there, there were stumbles that could have been solved with more communication and um, you just cannot over communicate. So um, don't assume that, uh, you know, the other parties uh, are on the same page because they might not be. Um, we, when I created the schedule, I didn't leave enough time for design and design iterations. And so we spent it up uh, using more time in design than I had uh, projected. And this was actually a really good thing because uh, we were really happy with uh, the project and the product. And it's really, it's much easier for um, the customer to react to something that they can see and, and interact with and uh, use the controls. And a lot of the improvements that we made for usability came through uh, those uh, interactions um, you know, with the things that were being implemented, either prototypes or uh, fully implemented. Um, 
And maybe one of the uh, biggest things that we still want to go back and do is we didn't write a test interface for the C C3 uh, API. And so in one case, uh, right before launch uh, for the C3 transform um, unveiling of the developer portal, there was a bug fix that happened upstream and it was, it was a great fix, but we had worked around the bug and um, it, uh, it was one of those silent failures uh, that broke functionality in the site. We had a, a bunch of broke, broken links because uh, they were reformatted and uh, any kind of silent failure is bad. So uh, make sure that you put test interfaces in these automated processes um, so that you don't have silent failures and the alarm bells ring whenever something goes wrong. Um, and with that, I want to say thanks. Uh, this was totally a we project, and I said we a lot uh, as I walked through the slides. And uh, the we is the entire team at Pernovix and the C3.ai uh, developer relations and developer experience and documentation teams. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was awesome. And it's my pleasure to show you the developer portal that we built together. So this is the C3 developer portal. And as you can see, it has a really good C3 feel, right? It's got black, it's got white. It really feels like a C3 website, which was very important for us. Uh, in this developer portal, users can quickly get access to the getting started documentation. They can get full documentation access access to the training, to the community, to contact us, and to the C3.ai uh, Visual Studio Code extension, which is essentially an IDE. So the first thing I'll show you is the documentation, because that's what we're here to talk about. So here we have featured uh, guides. Remember, all of this is getting imported from the C3CI system. I also have a search uh, bar here, and I can search across multiple versions of the platform since we've imported documentation from multiple versions. If I was to search for something, say user, I can get guides, topics, and types, and I can filter on any of those categories. I can also look at actual categories and filter on those. Let's say I'm interested in topics, and I'm interested in topics about administration. So I can see here, you know, there's uh, emails using AWS SES, the Azure Data Catalog, sodding engine, or maybe I want to see guides that include the term user. So here I see the C3 AI suite getting started guide. Now let's click on that. I'm given access to the guide right from here with some really nice features like download to PDF. And this is actually over here, you can see on the left-hand side, the architecture of this guide which is actually built up of many individual markdown files having been rendered into this site here. And so we can click on any of these and see how they work. We also have a nice go to the next document button. Um, so going back, when I search for the type user, maybe this time I actually want the type user. So here's the type, and now you can see two types. So what I want to do is I just want the 712 one, boom, one type. And now I can click on it. And this documentation here is being rendered directly from the object definition itself. So this thing here is a comment in my actual implementation file. All the fields come directly from the implementation file. I believe I can go back to the top from there. Or I can expand this field to get more information about it. Right. Also, I can click here to see a list of all the fields and functions. If I want to go directly to that function, all members, get all member objects. If the given user is impersonating, return members are the ones coming from the impersonation result, which is a member. And notice that that's a link. So I click on that, and now I'm looking at the documentation for the type member. And so all of this documentation is being rendered directly from the implementation files and given to users in a way that is accessible and easy to use right here. Uh, we've also, as I mentioned, integrated the training. So here we have, you know, the catalog and the schedule of all of our courses. You can enroll in a class and links directly to the community. Uh, this currently isn't actually embedded in the site, but SSO is built. And so when I have a 
user object in the developer portal, it's the same user in the community, and this is a potential future project for C3 and Pronova to tackle together. So we're very excited about the developer portal and what we've done about C3, and I would like to share with you a small anecdote about how valuable this has been. Um, so to tell you the story, I need to tell you about the C3 AI Digital Transformation Institute. So C3 AI DTI has a mission to attract the world's leading scientists to join in a coordinated and innovative effort to advance the digital transformation of business, government, and society. And so how are we doing that, okay? Basically, we've partnered with some of the top universities in the world, as well as the NCSA, which is the National um, Center for Supercomputing Applications, and Berkeley Lab, both of which basically have a supercomputer. And we've, we're running the C3 AI suite on top of that supercomputer, and we're providing researchers from the top universities free access to the platform, as well as uh, resources to fund their um, to fund their research. And the first call for propos proposals is for the mitigation of COVID-19 and future pandemics. So we're giving grants and free computation to researchers who are applying machine learning and AI methods to mitigate the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, designing and sharing clinical trials, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the C3 DTI has a biannual call for research proposals. I mentioned the first one is uh, COVID-19 research. And we give 26 research grants awarded each year, uh, two for $500,000, 16 of them for $250,000, and eight for $100,000. And these are 12-month grants, as well as computation, to try to build research that can go out into the open source world to support these important societal differences. Okay, good. So we are doing DTI, and I get an email from the Dean of Engineering of UC Berkeley saying, hey, Riley, can I solve X problem using the C3 platform, right? Because he's trying to tell his engineers, you should sign up for DTI, we'll give you $500,000 and you can use the platform, but he needs to know if the platform can solve some problem. So before I would have had to write a long email and maybe record a demonstration of me solving some problem using the platform, but I got this email and I was very excited to be able to simply reply with a link to some documentation in the developer portal that he could access and understand the capabilities of the C3 platform for himself. And so we were able to achieve the goal we wanted with the developer portal, which is to have an experience which is you know, appropriate for people like the Dean of Engineering at UC Berkeley without having to pay for the platform they can get to the docs and understand what it can do uh, easy, easily and simply. And so to me, that's a success and we're very excited um, to see where we're, what we're doing next. Thank you so much for your time and uh, check us out on c3.ai and pronovix.com.